Hello there, Anxious Cynic here with part three of our Minimator 2 series, and we're gonna cover the basics of animation, the technicalities of how to go about doing it in Minimator, and then we're gonna finish up with doing a walk cycle. So as you can see here, we have a Steve character for our example, and how do we animate them? First thing we're gonna do is drop down all of Steve's body parts and options here in the timeline, and we can just click on the timeline so we can mess with our cursor and wherever we have the cursor we can create a keyframe so there's a few ways to create a create a key create a keyframe <laughs> one way is you can double click and wherever you double click you will create a keyframe we can automatically create keyframes when we select a part and we move it you'll see right there created that keyframe or you can move your cursor to where you want and hit the control key and while you're holding it press the Q key and that will place a keyframe as well so let's delete those I'm gonna highlight them press delete on my keyboard and what I'm gonna do is set a base keyframe for all of the parts here so I'm just gonna box select this by clicking and dragging hit control Q and then now we have a base keyframe. So one issue I see happen a lot with uh, newcomers to Minimator is they want to animate the character, but they're not really familiar with how keyframes work, I guess. And so what they'll do is say we want Steve's head to move. We're just going to tilt it a bit and do like so. So basically what's happening here is these keyframes are data points for object data. That sounds way more educated than I am, but I'm going to go with that. So basically, at this keyframe, Steve's at this pose, at this one, he's at that pose. And when you play in between them, the program is interpolating to those two different poses. And this is happening because we have these two keyframes. So I think what some people may be doing, if I delete this keyframe, they've moved down to the timeline where they want this pose to be happening, and they set that keyframe. And then they go back and they go, it's not moving. Why is it not moving? I moved it where I wanted it to be at this point and I want it to move from his original position, which was by default right there. So that's because they didn't create a keyframe. So now Steve doesn't move his head. And you may notice that his head is actually not moving like that anymore because when I did this, when I went to reset here, this keyframe was highlighted. So no matter where this marker is, or the timeline marker is in the scene, if this keyframe is highlighted, then what we do is going to apply to that keyframe. It's not gonna create a new keyframe. So you have to make sure that it is no longer highlighted. And then when we make a change, it'll create that new keyframe. So let's drag this back over here so that it doesn't happen so slowly. And that's another thing. Your animation is based on the distance between the keyframes, the speed of the animation that is. So if I want to have Steve put his leg out, and I put on frame 20, and we come up here. So this is a pretty big movement. He's going from 90 degrees to 90 degrees. Well, it's a 90 degree movement anyway. So if we do like that, you'll see it moves at a certain speed. So if I drag this back to 10, he does it faster. So with that in mind, you can adjust the type of animation you're making. You can make it faster, you can make it slower, because it's all happening in the time between these two data points, these keyframes. So let's go ahead and do a couple more things here. I'm just gonna put these two like so. So those two are gonna be basically on the same uh, timing there. And the right leg, we can put on the same timing as well. So basically what we have is this movement here. Very awesome animation. We are going to be working for Pixar in no time. So what you'll notice here is that the movements are pretty linear, you might say. So we can actually change that. Without having to add more keyframes, we can adjust how this animation is happening. And that is with keyframe transitions. So if I go over here and let's say we want to do it on the left leg, and I come over here to my keyframe settings, and we have transitions. And as you can see, it's on linear. So if I click this, you'll see it brings up this box of transition options here, and you'll see it went off of the screen here, and there's no way to scroll that I'm aware of, so this is kind of an issue, and I think this is caused by the fact that in part one, we set our preferences, and I had compact panels enabled. If I disable that, you'll see we get this separation here. So if I go back to transitions, you'll see that it drops down on the bottom and we can see all of our options. If, however, you wanna keep compact panels or just alternatively, you can also access this 
by right clicking with that keyframe selected and you have transition and then we can get that same menu right here without having to go over here to another panel so i'm just going to go to transition and let's make this one uh give them one of these uh bouncy ones and you'll see when i press play <laughs> that like did that okay that's not the best example and we'll go ahead and just put some on these other ones and then when we watch the animation you'll see that that changed the timing and the way that those move let's say for this let's um put a bounce and we'll make it 60 frames out so again the timing can affect that even with the keyframes so for here let's have steve drop down he's doing kind of a a very bad split and we can put the bounce transition and when we watch this you'll see that with the added timing it gives that keyframe transition time to show what it can do so if i bring this in 30 a little bit more realistic so we get an automatic bounce animation just by using that keyframe transition all right with that silliness out of the way let's create a walk cycle so here's something nifty about my animator let's go ahead and i'm just going to put a keyframe over here on oh my ac just turned on uh, i'm going to put a keyframe on frame 45 and what I'm gonna do is select the first keyframe, make sure it's highlighted so you, on the root object of Steve, I have two keyframes, my start keyframe, my end keyframe. This is where I want Steve to stop walking. So if I go down here, I highlight this first keyframe, I right click, and then you'll see right here in this option menu, we have create walk cycle, create run cycle. So I wanna walk, I'm gonna create a walk cycle. And there we go, and you'll see it automatically puts in those keyframes now it'll be more if you go further out on the timeline i went to 45 and you'll see here we have all these keyframes here this is because we already had our base keyframes and the walk cycle creates them automatically so i'm just gonna delete those because we don't need them and then we get exactly what we're looking for so this is a way that you can make an automatic walk cycle but uh it doesn't really look the best maybe if you're going for kind of a little bit more traditional minecrafty walk cycle but maybe we want to do something a little more advanced looking so i'm just going to line all these keyframes up we can adjust the timing of this later but just so it's simple here we want to do like this and also there are transitions applied to these so i want to start with a blank slate i'm going to change all these to linear and there we have a very linear walk cycle one thing you'll notice is that this walk cycle does not include anything for the head you know, maybe you'd want something for the head, so we'll just go ahead and slap some keyframes in there for the head as well. And again, we can change the timing of this. Maybe we want to offset the swing of the arms to the legs, things like that. But for now, we're just trying to use our key poses, and that's what these are. So we have our key pose from when Steve is standing still, the uh, midpoint of his front, the right leg being front, his left leg being front, and then back to not walking, and he's still again. So that's what we need, and we're going to be basing the rest of our animation off of those key poses. So the first thing we may want is a passing pose. So I'm going to go about midway here, and on the first point of the walk here, it is the right leg that's going forward. So that's the one I'm going to select, and I want to just add a passing pose. And typically what you have is a bent knee on the passing pose, so we get this. And that doesn't look good because he's coming from that stationary position but uh, we'll deal with that in a little bit so for this one where the left leg is coming forward we're going to do the same thing but of course on the left leg we're gonna make that passing pose bend his leg and then you'll see you get a little bit more of a natural looking walk cycle another thing we can do we don't want our uh, timeline to just keep playing if i want to keep going over this and watch the walk cycle without having to add more keyframes i can actually right click and hold and drag on my timeline just like so and you will see that we've created a timeline selection however that doesn't really do anything for us at the moment so if i turn on this down here enable looping we can play it again and you'll see that it's just going to keep playing that little section over and over now when i want to turn it off what happens is if i click it again it enables seamless looping and when we play this you'll see that nothing happens with that seamless looping has done nothing so if i actually add another keyframe 
just further on down the timeline here, you'll see that nothing's still happening because we still have the selection. So if I disable that by right clicking on the timeline there, then you'll see that it actually continues playing to whatever keyframe is there. So let's say if I actually move this keyframe, move Steve like so, and I hit play, you'll see we get that. Let's actually, uh, I think we're inheriting a transition there. Yep, let's put that on the near. So it's another thing to note, kind of a side note I wasn't planning on doing there, is when you have a keyframe created, like this was the only keyframe we had, we set a transition for it. Every subsequent keyframe you create after that point is gonna inherit that same transition. So you wanna keep that in mind and you know keep your transitions organized. So now if we play it, you'll see that Steve goes back in the timeline, reloops, and it's just based on the last keyframe we have in the timeline. Generally, I don't really find that extremely helpful, but maybe you'd want it. So let's put our looping back on. Let's put our uh, scene back together here and get rid of all that extra stuff that we created for that little brief tangent. So with those things in mind, what I actually want to do is make this a little bit more loopable. So what I'm going to do is actually copy these keyframes here by Control C, hit Control V, and it pastes it wherever my mouse cursor was on my timeline. And we're just going to try to line this timing up the same. So in order to get a seamless looping here, what I'm actually gonna do is select like so. So this way we go from this pose where his leg is completely forward to this leg where his, leg is, his right leg is completely forward. So now we've got a seamless walking animation that we can loop over and over and see all, our, all of our changes without adding a whole bunch more keyframes. So if you're happy with that, then you've got a good old, uh, you know, walk cycle there, but let's see if we can do just a little bit of more interesting stuff. So maybe at these points when his uh, legs are the most uh, exaggerated, for lack of a better word, maybe I want to have his body turn a bit. So we'll just do five degrees there. And then what I can actually do is I've got two keyframes here that I want to apply the same value to. So I can hold shift and then select two separate keyframes and then when I change a value such as the body here we want to go negative five then that's going to change that value for both of those keyframes so you'll see there Steve's body is kind of going back and forth and you could put some music to that maybe that uh, ladies man song or woman's man something about the way I walk and all that stuff I'm not gonna try to sing it so now we've got the body kind of swaying a bit Steve's got a little bit of swagger there maybe we want to add a little bit of a uh, bips and bobs to the head so again we're going to I want this to happen on both of these keyframes so I'm just gonna dip the head a bit and we'll do about four degrees there and then on this one, he's going the other way. So we'll do about negative four there. And it's very exaggerated. And maybe since we've got so much of that happening, we want to uh, give just a little bit of a, a turn on the head. Pretty good, not looking too terrible. So the next thing I'm noticing is his arms are just kind of boring. They're. Uh, just going back and forth linearly. For the legs, it's not so bad because we have more keyframes and a little bit more happening. So linear is just fine for those. It actually could mess up the walk cycle if we tried to add transitions to the legs. It would uh, maybe not look as flowy, but for the arms, they're just kind of swinging back and forth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight all of these keyframes, right click, and we're going to give them, let's just uh, ease in, ease out sign. You'll see now his arms kind of have a more of a flow to them. They look like they're kind of, you know, moving with some inertia and not just linearly being forced back and forth between those two positions. Okay, so now maybe we want to add a little bit of bobbing. You can see here that when he's at this point, his, uh, his feet are kind of off of the ground a bit. So maybe, you know, he should be coming down a bit on those. The problem with that, so for instance, let me go ahead and move Steve. So if I wanted him to walk from that position to that position. So on our end keyframe, let's go ahead and uh, get rid of this, get rid of our uh, looping selection there. Okay, <laughs> we have that transition on there. Oh, we forgot about that. See there, you gotta keep up with that. So let's put linear on there and Steve walks and that's what he does. So we want him to walk over there, but we wanna add this bobbing. And the problem is if we do the bobbing, then it's going to affect that motion in terms of like him walking forward and we may need to adjust the timing so you see 
the legs are kind of sliding. He's, he's walking a bit faster than he's actually moving, and we may want to adjust that later. However, if you recall what I said about your keyframes, then if we adjust this, and then he comes back up to zero here, and then he comes back down here, so then that timing is kind of locked in with those keyframes. If we wanted to adjust that timing, we'd have to adjust the rest of our walk cycle or go back and redo all this stuff. And you know, I want him to actually not walk quite as far. I want him to end here. But what that's gonna do is only adjust that timing for these, between these two keyframes here, because we have these other keyframes and they're set to whatever position he was at at the point that we set those keyframes. So what we can do just gonna get rid of these and get rid of this last keyframe here. So if we wanna be able to adjust Steve's whole body without it affecting the timing of if we had him moving around in our scene here, is we can go to Steve, right click on him, gonna go to add folder, and then you'll see that it puts Steve in the folder. And since our base position was at zero, then everything is uh, where we want it to be. If Steve was somewhere else in the scene, then that might be kinda weird where he he'll be in a different position than where the folder is. So if that happens, you just need to align Steve's position with the folder. I have other videos on this, maybe we'll get into it at another point, but for now we're keeping it simple. We're at the base position of zero, so right there is where the folder is, right there is where Steve is, they line up perfectly. So what I can do is actually move Steve using the folder. So we'll do like so, and then you'll see that Steve moves. Maybe a little bit further. Good enough for now. And now let's add those bips and bobs. So what I can do, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just put a keyframe for all of these because we don't want them bobbing at every single point. We want them to be coming up right about there. So for all of these, we're gonna have Steve dipping down. Something like that. So we'll just, you know, give it an even negative one. And then for these, bits here where he's coming up on that leg you'll see his foot is buried down in the ground now we don't want that so we're going to select these two keyframes and we're going to put him at zero all right so let's go ahead and bring our timeline selection back in and now when we watch this walk cycle steve's actually moving and he's got a bit of swagger now you'll see that when you do a walk cycle here his feet are sliding, we don't want that, and that's why we want to adjust the timing of his walk. That doesn't look good because his foot is sliding. He's, he's walking faster than he's actually moving, and that's why we did the folder thing. Now I can go in here, and I can actually adjust the distance he's walking, the timing of the walk. I can either move him further so that he has more distance to cover, and his legs will slide less, or, you know, if I didn't need him to go further, but his legs are still sliding, then I can adjust the distance to this keyframe. So I wanted to walk a little faster. I can bring this keyframe in. And you'll see there's a little bit less sliding. I can bring it in even more. And we're not affecting these keyframes we put for his bobbing because we're using the folder to move him. So let's just go ahead and watch that. That looks a good bit better. So there you go. There's uh, Steve Walken. That was uh, oh, Christopher Walken. Anyway, so that's how to use animation with keyframes. That's how to use transitions to adjust that. That's how to make a walk cycle using the automatic walk cycle and or creating your own custom walk cycle. You can do all this from scratch. We just use the automatic walk cycle to give us our base keyframes, uh, poses, key poses. There we go, I think that's the proper word. We gotta talk like an animator here. But anyway, that's gonna do it for me. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you learned something and I'll catch you in the next one.